Hi students and welcome to Preliminary Chemistry and the Chemical Earth topic. Uh, this particular video, video number four in our series on industrial separation, is probably a, um, I guess, one you can skip if you want. I'm hoping that each of you will produce a um, small research report just on a particular type of separation um, method that's used in one of the spheres, but uh, I thought I'll give you just a quick overview of the sorts of things you might like to include. So this is a case study from the lithosphere, and it will combine some components from the uh, hydrosphere as well. So we're going to have a look at gold mining, and particularly uh, gold panning, as a method for extracting gold. So what we're looking for separation methods is we're trying to find what our desired material is and separate it from the other components of the mixture. Now gold is found in um, rocks small deposits, sometimes very, very large ones, but very, very rare, um, but mostly in, in small nuggets or little flakes that are mixed with the um, rock, break down as the rock weathers, and then are distributed with other types of sand, soils, gravel, silts, and so on. Um, they can then get washed into the rivers. You may have gone gold panning at some point, so you might recognize this particular pan. Um, as something that we use to uh, try and isolate the gold from all of the rest of the um, gravel and surrounding uh, material. Most of the time when we're panning for gold, we may find a very, very small amount in a very large uh, amount of um, dirt, stones, gravel and so on. So it's one of those processes that you need to be a little bit patient if you want to pull some gold out. The separation process is basically this. Um, on the large scale, we have large amounts of rock material that is um, collected by mechanical excavators. These are processed through a sluice, which is basically um, lots and lots of water being washed over the mixture. Usually, it's being agitated in some way, vibrated or rotated. Um, and then there will be a series of traps. The point of any separation method is there must be a property, a physical or a chemical property, which our desired substance has, which is different from the other components of the mixture. And in this case of gold, it's very dense. It has high density. And what that means is that when you mix it in an environment where um, very dense material will drop, then it means that if we can sort of keep mixing at a point where we can just remove or skim off the lighter or less dense material from the top, the gold will settle to the bottom and hopefully will be in a much higher concentration. We may actually be able to see it sometimes. You can't see there's gold in something until you separate some of the background away from it. What this means is that um, any of the material that's lower in density, like the silt and the sand and the, the gravel, may be removed and washed away in the traps and leave uh, increasingly more concentrated amounts of gold um, as the process continues. Why is it a useful product? Well, I don't need to explain to you the reason why gold is so important. Uh, it is a major currency, one of the things that um, uh, I guess is consistent with shares going up and down and um, interest rates going up and up and down. Gold is often used as a form of investment or a way of, of protecting wealth um, simply because um, it tends to hold its value so well. Now it does fluctuate of course, um, but it tends to hold its value reasonably well. We also like wearing it um, and certainly in a lot of ancient times um, the value of a kingdom was based on um, its share of gold. So a lot of things particularly made for kings and pharaohs uh, were made out of gold. One of the problems when you are panning for gold, particularly if you're doing it on a large scale process on a mining scale, is there is huge amount of waste. Lots and lots of the um, uh, material that surrounds the gold, so the silt, the sand, the gravel, any of those other things that the gold has been contained or part of, uh, need to be get gotten rid of. Now, traditionally, you just wash it back into the river with the water, um, but what this was doing is creating uh, dirty or turbid waters that were um, less clear, so not as easy for the light to penetrate. Sometimes it was actually clogging up channels, um, just this extra deposits of materials, creating mini dams, if you like. 
um, and also could occur could could result in some changes in fish breeding pools. So as a consequence of that, um, there are specific uh, ponds, different areas set aside called settling ponds, which um, are allowed to build up with the salt, uh, with the silt, with the sand. Um, all of that uh, gets deposited in there, all the excess waste. Um, and then once that has settled out, then the clean water can then be returned uh, to the rivers. And collected waste may be used to fill the excavation site after mining. And often a lot of work goes into restoring uh, mine sites now, uh, to, not to the way they were obviously, but to try and um, re-establish the ground, uh, fill up any of the holes, and perhaps sometimes even some of the mining companies do some replanting to try and regenerate um, the, a, 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 an environment where um, they have been mining. Hopefully you'll have an opportunity to have a look at one case study of a particular type of separation technique used in one of these spheres. Thanks for watching.